Hello and welcome back to this series where I'm gonna be building an entire software company from scratch using only no code tools. In the last video, we looked at several different ideas, how I got those ideas, where they came from and where they could possibly go. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and check that out. But in today's video, I'm gonna be choosing one of those ideas and we're going to look even more in depth about, okay, how are we gonna actually build this thing? You know, Where are our customers going to be? Kind of start thinking about how we're going to sell the product and how we're gonna build the product, which no code tools we're going to use to build it and that is what we're going to cover in today's video so starting off in the last video i kind of led to this a little bit but i think that the career page builder that i was talking about i just don't think it's going to be possible to build with no code i looked into it a little bit more and it would maybe be possible but it would be so much taping things together uh, that it would be just held together with like bubble gum and hairpins. And it would also be really expensive because there's a lot of different tools that we'd have to incorporate just to build it. Uh, so I'm going to throw that one out. And the other one that I actually think is a good idea is the like no code tool um, blog marketplace type thing. I do think that that's a good idea. And I think there's a need in the market, at least from an SEO perspective. So what I actually am going to do is I'm still going to build that, but I'm not going to do it in this series. I'm going to do another series where I actually build a blog from scratch, probably also using no code, uh, but obviously a blog is way easier uh, because I've had a lot of success with blogs in the past. I own a couple of different blogs and I co-own a few other blogs as well, and they're both doing pretty good financially. So I think covering that would be beneficial. But for this series, I think the best idea moving forward is going to be that promotional uh, database or directory where there's a bunch of people that, you know, my customers can reach out to, to promote their product. And I think this will hit a real need in the market because there's a lot of startup founders that do not know how to do marketing at all. And so if I can give them basically this huge list of people that they can reach out to, and then also include informational um, stuff that will tell them how to craft a cold email so that the person will actually read it and reply and how to negotiate with them and how to like build that rapport and relationship. I think that that's something that a lot of first time startup founders don't know how to do. And it got me thinking more about, you know, less about the actual product and more about the offer. And this is something that Russell Brunson, the founder of ClickFunnels talks a lot about is it's not about the product. I mean, it is, but it's all mostly about the offer, right? What can you include? What can you bundle together that your audience really needs? And so I'm looking at this market of like, you know, new time founders, and I'm thinking, what do they need to get their business off the ground? Like, what do they need to do marketing? And I think that the core product is great and it's going to be awesome, but including some informational stuff as well to help them on their way is going to make the value of the product go way up. So focusing on having an offer instead of just a product, I think is going to separate this from any other tool out there that does this. Although I, I haven't seen really any other tool that's going to do it the same way that, that I'm going to do it. Um, so that, you know, differentiation might not be, even be all that important, but I think it's going to be extra beneficial to my customer. So let's actually look at what we need in order to build this, right? Because we're only using no code tools. We're not writing any code and there's a lot of no code tools out there. So which one uh, should we choose? Now, the, the actual answer is which ones should we choose because we're going to need multiple tools to kind of tie everything together. And I think the best place to start is to look at the product and what the product's going to do and like list all those things out. Like what, what exactly do we need the product to do? And then we can find the tools that will fit the bill there. So the first one, an obvious one, is we need our customers to have the ability to purchase, right? So that they can check out, they can buy the product and be put onto a subscription. And so that's, that's kind of the first one. And the next one is we need them to be able to log in and out, right? Kind of obvious. The next one is since this is, the product's basically a glorified list, I would love it if they could sort, filter, search, and favorite uh, the contacts in the list. So you could basically have a folder of your favorites and you can go through and favorite ones that you want to contact. And then you can like go through your favorites list and contact them. And then the last piece of the puzzle is a place to actually, you know, store this huge list of contacts, right? Like a database effectively, but a no code database. So these are kind of like the four things that I'm thinking we're going to need. 
uh, in order to build this product. And after looking around for a bit, kind of like searching the web, scouring the web for what tools um, fit all this description, uh, I think actually Webflow um, and some other tools built on top of it is gonna be what's going to work the best. Uh, I probably could have built this with a lot of different kinds of tools, um, but Webflow seems to be really popular. There's a lot of documentation for it. A lot of people are using it. So if I run into problems, I can you know, ask questions on forums or potentially someone's already asked the question, I can just read the answer. And that's not something that you're gonna get with a tool that's not used as much. And this is uh, you know, a great advice even if you're actually using code. You know, What framework do I use? Well, one that's popular, uh, because if you run into problems, you wanna be able to like look up answers. And so Webflow is very popular. A lot of people use it. I could have also gone with Bubble, which is probably also really popular and a lot of people use it. But I found some plugins for Webflow that look really nice and are really clean. And they're basically exactly what I'm looking for. And I also found a template, which is awesome because if you use a template, it means that you don't have to build everything from scratch. So I'm gonna start with a template. I'm gonna show you guys uh, exactly what that looks like and how we're going to use it to continue to build out this software. So Webflow, I think is going to work for, of course, building the whole front end as well as uh, on this CMS content management system plan, we get 2000 items. So that's probably enough for all of the contacts that I'm going to have in this, you know, directory, if you will. And even if it's not, I can upgrade and get 10,000. Uh, I noticed that it kind of caps out at 10,000, even on the enterprise plan, they allow you to have custom everything except for CMS items. Um, so Maybe we'd have to switch CMS in the future if the list got over 10,000, but I think 2,000 to start is acceptable. So that knocks off the database, right? So this is where we can store all of the contacts uh, and information. Okay, so now we need the ability to like purchase and log in, which member stacks seem to be like a really popular one um, that, you know, for, for 30 bucks a month, 4% transaction fee, uh, you can basically have people log in, log out, uh, take payments, set up subscriptions, things like that. Um, what, you know, and I looked through this and after looking over this site, I, I looked up some other, you know, similar products and I actually found one that I kind of like more, which is called Outseta. And the reason that I like Outseta more is because they've got a CRM and email built into the platform. And so they do billing and they do authentication, but they also allow you to like communicate with your potential users. And you know, you have leads and you can set up campaigns and automations and things that, you know, I was planning to probably just use active campaign because that's what I've always used. But it sounds like I could do this in Outseta included in their subscription. And they're roughly the same price. Um, you know, because they only charge a 1% transaction fee instead of 4%, uh, which will add up over time. So I think I might go with Outseta, but I think member stack would also be pretty good. And lastly, we wanted that filtering, searchable, saving functionality. And I, I stumbled across this uh, plugin for Webflow, which is basically, and it's actually not just for Webflow. I believe you can use this on any kind of site, but it's completely no code and it allows dynamic filtering, favoriting, uh, real-time search, sorting, uh, and some other things that I don't really care about. But you know, the, the CMS uh, favoriting is, is big, and I think I saw it somewhere on here. Um, right, so right, if you're using member stack, member space, or Alceta, favorites can be saved to their login, which is huge because now my user can log in on any device and they can see their favorites. And that's a pretty important thing that I want my users to have is that, you know, if you log in on your phone or you log in on your computer or a different computer, you still have all the same information that you had and you have your list and your favorites no matter where you are. So the uh, 10,000 foot overview, if you will, is going to be Webflow is going to be the the front end of the site. It's gonna be what the user visitor to the page sees. And then we're going to use Outseta uh, to have billing and authentication. So when the user wants to buy a product, when they want to log in, uh, and we're also going to be able to get their email and send follow-up automations for people that maybe they put in their email, but they didn't end up purchasing. So we can follow up with them and that's really useful. And then we're going to have just regular WordPress 
CMS that's going to hold all of the contacts, basically the product itself, right? Because the product is a huge list of, of different blogs and people that you can reach out to to promote your startup. And then we're going to use JetBoost to be able to kind of like sort that list, favorite that list, uh, and filter it however a user wants to. So all in all, I think it's gonna cost maybe around $100 per month for all of these tools that we're gonna be using, but that's pretty cheap compared to if you're gonna hire a developer to build the whole platform, you can build it yourself without coding. Now, if you know how to code, you could probably build it cheaper than that, but for not using any code, using only no code tools, $100 to build your whole software, that's a pretty good deal. Now, I want to switch gears for a second and not talk about how we're going to build the product, but let's talk about the product itself. The product itself, of course, is a huge list of blogs and other sites and different companies that have blogs that my user will be able to reach out to and request that they are included in their blog. And so that's benefit for my user as they potentially could get backlinks to their site and they would get coverage of their you know, startup and their product and potentially get customers. So it's a great way for my customers to build out the marketing for their product. But how am I going to go about actually getting this huge list of contacts? Because it's not like I know hundreds and hundreds of different blog owners. I only know a few uh, and maybe they might make it on the list. But my idea is that I search Google for keywords that I think startup blogs or sites that would be covering startups would be ranking for. Uh, so something like best marketing software, right? If I'm writing an article about best marketing software, I'm probably writing about you know different startups and different software companies that have MarTech or marketing technologies. So that could be a great way to find a bunch of different sites. So I'm gonna try that out and see if I can find some different sites that I could include on this list. So if I search for best marketing software and then I'm, you know, go to like page five, six, seven, because the first couple pages are going to be like really, really big sites like HubSpot and stuff. And that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for really small blogs. And if I just look through some of these, I mean, you know, the 13 best marketing automation software platforms, 10 best marketing, you know, from, from some pretty small looking sites, or at least sites I haven't heard of. I mean, Shopify's here, but you know, some of these I haven't really heard of. So like the blogging wizard, right? Um, this looks like a relatively small site. I haven't heard of them before. And they're just covering all these different uh, softwares that do email automation. Um, so let's just look like and see in their in their blog, they, they, it looks like they cover a lot of different tools. So they cover like social media tools, they cover SEO tools, you know, blogging tools, email marketing tools. So if you're building a piece of software in any of these categories, let's just look at reviews. Um, you can see you know, teachable alternatives. So if you're building an educational technology platform, uh, like that's your startup, this could be a great place to get your product listed, right? And you get listed on this blog, potentially get customers and traffic, uh, depending on, you know, which one of these reviews that, you, you know, and they have a bunch of reviews. So what I really want to do is I want to get together a list and I want to include, you know, obviously, the, the name of the site, you know, an email uh, to the owner of the site and, you know, maybe their Twitter handle, their LinkedIn. I mean, I'm seeing Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook right here. And then maybe like uh, a link to their like contact page. Um, so let's just look at this site's contact page. So for example, on this page here, this is blogging wizards contact page. Their email is not actually an email. So th this is the thing, like I'm thinking, you know, at least I thought maybe I could just like scrape all these sites and like look for stuff. But the thing is, this is not going to be, be be picked up programmatically because it's not formatted like a real email. And so I think, unfortunately, I might have to go through a lot of these manually to look for information. And I think another important aspect that'd be valuable to my customer is this right here. Uh, start your email with, hey, Adam, uh, this is so that you know, you read the page, uh, because this person probably gets a lot of spam as he's, as he's saying. So this is something maybe I'll also include in the list, like a, like a note section, uh, where it's like how to best contact this particular blog. Uh, so you want to start your email with, Hey Adam, if you're going to contact bloggingwizard.com, 
um, and be, be clear and concise and they don't accept external contributors. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't accept internal contributors. Um, they won't, you know, do a deal with you or something like that. Um, but this could be a great site that you could potentially get your new startup featured on. Uh, and this is this is basically what I want to find like times hundreds, right? I want to find hundreds of sites like this. So this might mean going through Google search results, going, you know, down to page seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, way down in there and looking for really small sites, getting their contact information and putting it all into this massive list. And I think that there's going to be a lot of manual work here. So maybe I can either hire it out to someone on Upwork, because uh, this is really just like a data entry kind of type job, which could be done really cheaply, or I can just do it myself. So the last thing in this video, I want to show you this template that I found. Uh, it's built for recipes, but it integrates with JetBoost and it allows you to sort and favorite and filter and search and do everything that we need to do. So we're going to basically just clone this into our Webflow account and then just make it look the way that we want it to look. So this is going to be a really uh, fast kickstart uh, to build the product very quickly. And that's the great thing I think about no code is that you can get a whole product up and running in like a day. So that is all for this video and I will see you in the next one.